Hi, I'm recording this video for my students studying the programming of microcontrollers for GCSE Electronics. Now, this is chapter four still, and on the 20th page of the PDF, which I think is, is page 117, they give you this example. And looking at it, I thought that it might be worthwhile just showing you where you can get some of these flowchart boxes and symbols from. OK, because it's not necessarily explained uh, in this example. So this first one then where it says let C equal zero. So what we're doing here, we're, we are initializing a variable. And I've given you a similar but different example here. Now, if you need to, to do that, you can go down through the gallery. And if you go down, I think it's to maths. There we go. And expressions. So we drag that one in. And then say if you want some like C equals zero, you just double click it. And then you can choose, you know, ABC. So you can just type C if you want, you know, just type D if you want or A or whatever it is. So C and then equals. And then so what do we want to initialize it or set it to? Uh, well, in this case, it's zero. So I'm just going to type zero. But presumably, yeah, you could click the drop down there and then just click on OK. So it's as simple as that. OK, so that's where I got that part from. Um, now, they've also got this thing, which is incrementing. Now, that is an expression. So we can just drag an expression in like that. And then all we do, if you want to basically C equals C plus one, which means the current value of C, let's say C is currently five, five plus one is six. And then so six will then be assigned to the variable of C. So six will be the new value of C. So to do that, you just equals C equals, and then you could do, so C equals C, so obviously no change. And then plus, so we've chosen the plus operator there, and then whatever increment value you want. So you can do it like that. Now that's the way they've done it. I would like to just show you that there is another uh, block flowchart block that you could use instead. So this is increment and then increment C. So you might find that as actually a little bit more intuitive, you know, inc C increment C rather than saying C plus C plus one it really doesn't matter which one you use. Let's get rid of those. Now, this bit here, we're making a comparison. So I think it's more towards the top. Oh, there we go, decision making, and we need the compare box. So don't don't use this one, which is the one which we've been using so far for like checking switch inputs and the like way you would check the inputs. It's not that one, it won't work for you. You need to use compare. And then you can then double click it. And then you can say, for example, if is C equals 10, so C uh, equals, so these are the um, operators that you can use, you know, a quality operator of equals, and you've got, you know, not equal, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, and it was in this particular example, it was 10, wasn't it? Okay. So, yeah, so that's, that's where you get out from. Okay. Now, that's that's like part one, I suppose we could say. There are other ways to do it. Now, generally speaking, say if you have a look at this example, in fact, let's just run this example. So we we'll ignore their example now, we we'll just look at mine. You'll see it goes through this loop and then it eventually stops because it's going to do this loop five times. We start with a equals zero and then it goes a equals one. So this is the first loop or the first iteration, we could call it. And then so um, it then goes through again, it increments A and then keeps on doing it. So it will go through this five times and eventually when A is equal to five, then that um, comparison is um, true. So then it goes to stop. Now, if you want to, uh, let's just view the uh, program variables or watch the program variables. So I'm using A, so A is going to update here. So you'll see it's zero, one two, three, four, five, like that. OK, now um, in this particular example, it's always going to count five. Now, when you know it's always going to count five or however many you want, um, there's a much easier, simpler way to do it than this. OK, so I'm going to show you. In fact, there's a couple of ways. So let's have a look at um, an example here. This is a fairly standard thing that most programming languages allow, will allow you to do, and that's to repeat something 
for a set number of times, in this case, for 1 to 5. So the variable, which is identified by the letter i, will have a value, first of all, 1, and then 2, 3, 4, and 5, OK? And so it's going to do that five times. You don't have to start from 1. I mean, you could start from 0 to 4 if you wanted. You could do it like that. That would still be five times. Anyway, so um, let's just double click that. You'll see there's also a step value. So, you know, in this particular example, we're not going to want to do it. But, you know, if you wanted to step like, you know, like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, like that, if you wanted to, then, you know, you could do it as well. Um, but no particular need to do so in this time. Um, it also allows us to specify the variable identifier that we're using. We're, here, I just accepted the, the default of i, but you could choose like a if you wanted or whatever happens to be. OK, so actually using a for loop is generally regarded as a good thing to do if it, something is going to happen for a set number of times. So you don't have to break out of that loop. There's an even easier way to do this, actually. Um, if you have declared a subroutine to do whatever you want to do, in this case, I didn't know what I wanted it to do. I just called my subroutine something and then just put a wait in there. Then in the call, I can then just call that subroutine a certain number of times. In this case, I called it five times, but you know, I could call it, say, three times. So let's just try this now and run this. So you see it ran once, twice, and then three times, and then finished. So, you know, that's, that is ridiculously easy, really. So if you were going to do it like this, then uh, this example like this with subroutines, you'd probably declare all that stuff in your subroutine, and then it would be start, and then whatever this is. I don't know what it is, light sequence or something. So then you do light sequence times, um, well, times 10, because you want it to happen 10 times. So hopefully that is useful to you. Now you realize that you don't have to do it like this. You don't have to uh, initialize a variable and then increment it manually. Um, you can if you want. Um, not only can you use this equation to increment it, you can also use the increment block. Um, but you don't have to do it like that at all because use for loop is generally recommended if you're going to do it for a set number of times. Um, and if you really wanted to, you could do it like this as well. So hopefully that is useful to you, just so you know different ways and you're not limited to just this one way. Okay, that's it.